You're listening to Chuck Cash on the radio. Stop it. Chuck Cash is on the radio. What, Chuck Cash? On the radio? Yes, Chuck Cash is on the radio. He's on the radio now. How do and welcome to the Chuck Cash radio show. Over the next 30 minutes, we'll be taking a look back at the top stories and events in the week beginning Monday the 10th of December. So let's crack on. I've got more bile to bring up this week than a chain-smoking Gary Glitter with a Nelson Mandela-style chest infection. On the radio now. The fallout from the Manchester derby dominates the sports headlines. Nine City fans are arrested in connection with disturbances that took place at the end of the game. A game that saw Robin Van Persie score a late winner for the Reds. There was a partial pitch invasion and missiles were thrown, resulting in Man United skipper Rio Ferdinand being injured by a coin thrown from the stands. Proving that Man City will throw money at absolutely anything, and that at least one of their fans is a hell of a shot. Because if from 30 yards you can hit a pinhead with a 20 pence piece, you've got skills. Now there's talk of netting off the areas directly behind the goals, to minimise disruption from the stands leaving fans with only foul-mouthed profanities, racist taunts and abusive gestures to throw at each other. For when supporting their football team. Operation New Tree makes another arrest, but this time they seem to have a super injunction, so if you're playing along with the BBC Dirty Dozen bingo, I'm afraid we're all just going to have to wait. Hmm, a man in his 60s. How old is it? No, 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 no guessing. That's what gets people in trouble. David Cameron has dismissed loosening the restrictions on existing drug policy, insisting current legislation is working. Is he on drugs? Famous faces such as Richard Branson, Bill Clinton, Dizzy Rascal have given their support to a report that suggests the decriminalisation of some drugs. Scientists are asking for funding to be focused on rehabilitation and prevention, rather than punishment and imprisonment. But does it really add weight to the legalising drugs argument when the campaign is backed by the Virgin King, someone who famously never inhaled, a man best known for being bonkers, and a professor called Nutt? I think George Michael would have more chance being granted a hackney carriage licence than this attempt to change the law on drugs. Sadly. Italian Prime Minister Mario Monti says he's to step down early from his term, sending the markets into a spin at the prospect of Silvio Berlusconi returning to government. Not to mention sending the female staff in the Italian Parliament into a spin at the prospect of Mr Grabby the Arse Pincher being back in the office. The Australia Today presenters have made her public apology for the prank call that resulted in a nurse taking her own life. And now we wait to see if the press think they were contrite enough to placate an outraged British media. Then they can decide whether to stop hounding the pair of Aussie DJs or to continue until one of them reaches breaking point. Yes, it was a foolish prank but the media conveniently ignore how culpable they are themselves in the whole affair. How they fanned the flames of the royal frenzy to create a deadly, vicious cycle. The intense media focus may have already contributed to the loss of one life, but rather than back off, they seem intent on hounding the two Aussie DJs. Admittedly, the kind of work error this nurse made should not have been the reason for a mother of two to hang herself but we won't know all the facts until the full inquest results are heard next March. But a work error to some is far different to the mistakes made at work by others, or at least their perception of it, especially if their citizenship and right for their family to remain in the country were dependent on their employment. But there is one thing in which there can be no doubt. Few of us can say that we've ever made a mistake at work that's been turned into an international media event. I can't imagine how the press would have responded to the news of my nose dripping straight into a jacket potato that I then, seconds later, served to an unsuspecting member of the public. No doubt the Daily Mail would have had me tried and convicted before the ink was dry. Or the snot. These days, the news media speak from the viewpoint of judge rather than witness. And heaven forbid they take their place in the dock. No, they have to be dragged kicking and screaming to a year-long inquiry 
before being allowed to continue doing whatever necessary to get that story, no matter who it hurts in the process. It always makes me smile when a reporter turns the camera on his co-workers and peers, referring to them as the press pack and paparazzi or media scrum, as if they themselves were not part of it. Which is a bit like taking a picture of the sky from the middle of a forest and asking, where have all the trees gone? You're listening to Chuck Cash on the radio. Stop it. A garlic smuggler has been given six years in prison, the longest sentence for tax duty avoidance ever in the UK. The trial took longer than expected due to all the many giggling fits that broke out in court whenever the phrase garlic smuggler was mentioned. X Factor is finally over and the winner is one James Arthur. Yeah, that sounds about right. Although I think I would have gone with Sherman Tanker myself. Spice Girls, the musical Viva Forever, written by Jennifer Saunders, opens in the West End. When rumours first broke about songs of posh, sporty, scary baby and ginger, many of us were led to believe that the musical was about Man United. But the storyline, however, is inspired by the lyrics of the Spice Girls songs. So at least it shouldn't last too long. The basic plot is that characters Zig and Zig R want to spice up their lives, deciding they want to be Siamese twins, so embark on surgery to become one, but stop short when someone asks, who do you think you are? And theatre critics demand, what the hell are you thinking? On the radio now. British Bank HSBC have been fined £1.2 billion, which is $1.9 million, the largest fine in US history for money laundering. Although there's no mention of jail terms for executives or any on the board at HSBC. So a bank facilitates the illegal activities of Mexican drug cartels, condones the actions of terrorists and all but sponsors unauthorised trading nations, such as Iran, a recognised terrorist nation, who have threatened to launch nuclear missiles on its enemies, but no one goes to jail. How can that be? Isn't it treason or something? A bloke here just got six years for smuggling garlic. And in America, because of its three-strike law, there are some serving life sentences for petty theft, for crimes such as shoplifting, and in one famous landmark case, for stealing a slice of pizza. I mean, it's not like HSBC were duped. They approved transfers of massive sums of money from Iran and listed them as low risk. They had their money drop hatches made larger, specifically for Mexican money launderers to drop off bigger amounts. Which means someone at HSBC colluded with criminals, is potentially complicit in supporting terrorism. But it's been deemed that £1.2 billion is enough to avoid prosecution. £1.2 billion is about 1% of HSBC's stock value. 1%. Last week, Starbucks made a mockery of the British tax system by volunteering to pay corporation tax. Volunteering? What the frack is that about? It seems that it's not so much one rule for the rich and one for the poor, it's that if you're rich enough, there are no rules at all. We all knew the public purse had bailed out the bankers, but I don't think we actually realise it literally meant bailing out bankers. Us regular people worry and suffer sleepless nights. Some become stressed and some have even committed suicide over comparatively tiny amounts of debt. Every month, many in the UK go to prison for non-payment of fines, rent or credit debt. Sometimes for sums of less than £500. But in a society that worships the capitalist ideology, I suppose we shouldn't be surprised that the system protects those at the top at the expense of those at the very bottom. I sometimes think the only reason they don't go all the way and actually make poverty illegal is because they haven't yet built enough poor houses. Sorry, did I, I say poor houses? I meant prisons. They say money's the root of all evil. Well, for all of my life I've planned to be rich and it's still yet to happen. But I do have a list of intentions and none of them are evil. I suggest that money isn't the root of all evil. It merely pays for it. I said, I guess Chuck Cash is on your radio now. The government approves same-sex marriage, although not in Church of England or Wales. I'm not sure why. Some of the biggest gayers I know are C of E. And how can anybody deny someone of a same-sex marriage? 
I mean, it's dressing up, bouquets of flowers, a good cry and a disco. How gay is that? On the radio now. <laughs> the census results are in and for the first time, less than 50% of London's population are white British. Meaning that just over 50% are non-whites of the people that can now afford to live in London. The Daily Mail got so excited at the news of the census that at one point they nearly ran out of ink for their quill pens. And locally speaking, in Norwich, that came out as the most non-religious place in Britain. Bloody heathens. I mean, it's not like there's not enough churches, one on every street corner. In fact, there's nearly more churches in Norwich than there is charity shops. Mm, nearly. They ought to employ an inspiring influence from the community. You know, someone like Delia Smith. She could do a bit of recruitment for the church. Come on, let's be having you. Where are you? Probably shop on her at the football or drinking instead, I expect. A bit like you, Delia. On the radio, on the radio now. A police sting operation in Wisbeach has revealed that six out of seven shops sold alcohol to young'uns without checking for proof of ID. An investigation is now underway. Mostly by the drunken parents of Wisbeach. Yeah, they want to find out what legal beagle shop owners now forcing them to have to stagger down the shops themselves when they run out of booze. Bloody sport sport. A Milton Keynes company marked the end of a charity effort by joining in the dance craze that swept the world. Yep, Team Nifty from Nifty Lift and Fingal Drive, Stony Bridge, raised more than £700 in November for prostate cancer. The 14 members of the manufacturing firm celebrated the end of the moustache growing November by going Gangnam Style for this year's group photo. Gangnam Style was recently revealed as being the most commonly searched for internet phrase of last year. I haven't looked for it myself. I, uh, I misheard it the first time, see? I, I thought it was Gang Bang Style and, uh, and I've been a bit distracted since. <clears throat> yeah. A plaque has been revealed, unveiled even, to mark the work of a Suffolk man who for years looked after dozens of chickens on a roundabout. Ah. Oh. Gordon Knowles from Bungie tended to the birds who roomed on the chicken roundabout in Ditch and Amnar for, for decades. Yep, there were around about 300 of them till the last of them were rounded up in 2010. Well, they had to make way for all the East European migrants who wanted to set up home on the roundabout. Well, at least I think the chickens were rounded up anyway. That's your local news. Oh, look, here come Bronco. Bronco was a Fenland cowboy Who insisted we all call him the Duke All dressed in black with his ten gallon hat And spurs on his Wellington boots bom, bom, bom. Yeah, Bronco was a Fenland cowboy He was about as country as an East Anglian can be Well, except for the council flat In the caravans out the back All his 73 lime green fired But the Duke had a pretty fast shuffling hand He were the slickest cribbage player you'd ever see 15-2, 15-4, two runs and his knob And another pair, make a baker's dozen That's 13 oh, oh, oh. But the Duke, he never learned a loin dance Though he went along to each and every class Oh, he knew all the tunes, but that's too hard to move with one foot firmly placed in the past. Bom, bom, bom. Credit where credit's due. That man could surely hold a country tune. Oh, he'd be very surprised if there are any dry eyes. If you ever heard him sing a boy named Sue. Bom, bom, bom. At home on the free range egg farm. Or up in the saddle of his tradesman's bike. You'll see Bronco peddling. His dodgy goods in a layboy on the old A45. But Bronco was a free range cowboy, a Fenland bandit on the welfare state. 
He'll never take down that rag that used to be a Confederate flag. Well, that slowly cracked on Wayne commemorative plate. He'll die in his boots, never up in his roots. They'll play Elvis, and we swear you'll hear them say, Here, strange that old boy Bronco never married. What do you reckon? You think he was gay? And I say Bronco was a Fenland cowboy Who insisted we all call him the Duke All dressed in black with his ten gallon hat And spurs on his Wellington boots Yeah Bronco was a Fenland cowboy About as country as an East Anglian can be Well except for the council flat When the caravans out the back and he's 73, blowing green Ford Capri. You're listening to Chuck Cash on the radio. Stop it. The FA suggests introducing diplomacy lessons for the foreign players in the game, teaching them about British culture and attitudes towards racism. So then those foreign players can go on to teach their fans how to behave like decent human beings. For matters of national interest, the Prime Minister is requesting the retention of internet data. The plans include service providers and communication companies keeping all internet records in the UK on file for a year. A snoopers charter, say opponents, that include Deputy Prime Minister Nick Clegg. Possibly, but I think there's opposition to Mr Cameron's proposal because we just don't trust him. One of his cabinet ministers would probably leave the data on a train or dump it in a park bin anyway. Plus, if it means hacking into people's phone lines, didn't you already do that? Just ask the Metropolitan Police to borrow Andy Coulson's hard drive, or as it's known now, Exhibit A. I said a yes, Chuck Cash is on the radio now. The prospect of goal line technology in football seems a long way off, according to FIFA Secretary Michel Platini, who says he's against any kind of technology in football due to the extravagant cost. Yeah, because there's just no money in football, is there? Oh dear, petit plonkier. On the radio now. Because of what I do, you know, uh, all the sarcasm and stuff, I'm sometimes asked, do you actually like living in the UK? And I answer, yeah, yeah, I like living in the UK. But what I'd like to add and what I don't add is, yeah, I like living in the UK, apart from the racism and the football thuggery and the flag-waving sectarianism, and the financial corruption, and the political sleaze, and the media bias, and uh, paedophilia, the users, the abusers, and those that make their excuses, the class system hypocrisy, the elitist meritocracy, intolerance, apathy, and that xenophobic, we used to be an empire mentality, the bullying, the snobbery, the high street daylight robbery, monarchists, anarchists, apologists, and arsonists, Joggers, doggers, angry armchair bloggers, the lazy, the moaners, snobs, chavs and phonies, X Factor, The Sun, Jeremy Kyle, The One Show, tax avoiding fraudsters, celebrity obsessions, nimbies, bimbos, the double dip recession, piss takers and ambulance chasers and insurance hiking whiplash fakers, cold callers, email spammers, junk mail and virus scammers, transport system that's so out of date and the knock on effects it creates, the gridlock, the accident, black spots, traffic jams and precinct cops, speed cameras and wheel clamping, CCTV, excessive urban ramping, an inability to deal with the weather. Will there be enough grit this year? Is there ever? Never. But the thing that really makes my skin crawl, that winds me up and that really galls, the thing I find most intolerable of all, is our unique British ambivalence to just accept it all. Hey, what can you do? That's why instead I just say, yeah, I like living in the UK. You're listening to Chuck Cash on the radio. Stop it. Chuck Cash is on the radio. What, Chuck Cash? On the radio? Yes, Chuck Cash is on the radio. He's on the radio now. North Korea launches an unauthorised test rocket, despite international criticism, which threatens to breach the country's imposed UN sanctions. It's fifth time lucky for the North Koreans who were jubilant at the news, as the four previous attempts to launch had failed. Much of the success of the satellite launch 
can be put down to the continued support of committed partners and sponsors such as HSBC. Probably. On the radio, on the radio now. The Prime Minister apologises in the Commons and admits that the Conservative government was implicated in the murder of Belfast solicitor Pat Finucane 23 years ago. So at least it seems they've learnt their lesson from previous Westminster scandals, where the actions of one rogue element have deflected the finger of blame pointing at the state. No, this time they're blaming two rogue agents to avoid a criminal inquiry. For the cold-blooded murder of an innocent man. While sat in his home. In front of his family. A family that describes the latest report as a sham and a whitewash and just another Tory administration protecting a previous Tory government and is nothing more than hurtful and insulting lies. The Prime Minister, however, describes the report as the most intensive analysis of the murder to date. And sadly, that's probably true. Incidentally, there would be more focus and criticism of the Labour Party in my news reports, but unfortunately, when it comes to current events, it usually takes Ed Miliband a week or so to say anything of consequence. Ravi Shankar dies at the age of 92. Among the highlights of his career were recordings and performances with the likes of the Rolling Stones and the Beatles. But his most impressive achievement is how, with a name like Ravi Shankar, he never became more commonly used Cockney rhyming slang. Also this week we lost astronomer Patrick Moore who died at the age of 89. Moore was also famed for his rare talent of playing the xylophone. Wow, a musician who knows about the stars. What a babe magnet. With Dave Brubeck dying last week, Ravi Shankar and now Patrick Moore, followers of the Mayan calendar are saying it sounds like someone is forming a supergroup for the end of the world concert planned for the 21st of December. You're listening to Chuck Cash on the radio. Stop it. On Friday, the inquest results of Eva Riesling, the Tetra Pak heiress, revealed she died of excessive use of illegal drugs, namely cocaine. She was found, weeks after her death, in the family home, wrapped in a polythene sheet. you think being the heir to a Tetra Pak company, her husband would have done a nicer job with the packaging. Police say they knew the exact time of death, as they discovered an expiry date on the bottom. On the radio now. Well, we're coming to the end of our little half an hour together. If you've enjoyed the show, then please share it on whatever medium you're listening to it right now. Otherwise, I might feel like I'm talking to my fracking self. Having heard the show, you might be under the impression that all journalists, entertainers, bankers, police and politicians are corrupt. This, of course, is not the case. And you do have to feel sympathy for the innocent and honest, hard-working majority. For those that genuinely entered their profession with the best of intentions, but unwittingly are now tainted by the same shameful actions of a handful of their peers. So imagine how I feel as an impoverished entertainer of 20 years having to view the tasteless cheap trash that passes for entertainment on our radio and TV sets on a daily basis. But having abided by the law, paid my taxes, not touched kids and armed only with the truth, all have colluded in excluding me from achieving celebrity status. Upon reflection, this is probably just as well. Until the next time, my fellow plebs, take care of each other and thanks for listening. The nights. I said a year's jug cash is on your radio now.